Hi everybody, welcome to a very unusual ICD DWF repair video. This Commodore 8050 dual floppy disk drive was in fact not on my bench or even near me. Instead, one of my viewers asked some troubleshooting help via email and I ended having a lot of videos with oscilloscope signals on various circuit points of this drive. However, all video parts have been made with cell phone or hand camera, so I was really unsure if I could put together a video out of this repair. But since the repair attempt ended with a working drive, I thought a video like this can be useful as a troubleshooting aid at the very least. The 8050 is a really nice dual drive for the Commodore PET computer line. It has an IEEE 488 interface and can store just more than 1 MB of data on a single side of a normal 5.25 inch diskette, which is a lot of data for the early 1980s. The drive powers up fine without indicating errors. In fact, as a part of the power-up sequence, this drive could indicate a failure with some LED blinking patterns. It's indicated in the service manual, but as we have seen, this 8050 does not seem to find anything wrong during the power-up phase. But when trying to format a new disk, the drive seeks to track one stop and then nothing else happens. The path formatting command never ends or returns any error. Schematic and service information for this drive are available and the first thing to understand is what brand of drive mechanics have been used in the unit we want to service. The owner identified its drives as the Micropolis ones, so I can refer to the correct analog board schematic. As always, you can find useful links in this video description. Then I have of course asked the owner if the behavior of the unit changes when addressing the drive number 0 or the number 1, and he couldn't observe any difference. In this part of the schematic I have circled in red the drive 0 and 1 magnetic heads. Other than the head selection circuit, all the rest of the read-write electronics is common to both drives. Another issue that can happen with the 100 tracks per inch drives is the incorrect choice of floppies. In this picture I'm showing a couple of suitable ones. They are the kind you would use for example on a 1541 disk drive or on the Apple II disk drive. Notice that the bus one is certified for 96 tracks per inch, but the magnetic properties of the surface are exactly the same of any other single or dual density diskette. It was just tested a bit better than other brands floppies for surface defects, maybe. The newer 1.2 MB floppies invented by IBM instead are not suitable as they have different magnetic properties. These have the HD letters on the labels, standing for high density. Even with the correct floppy type, there is however another issue. Here we can see some information about a regular 48 trucks per inch drive and a 96 trucks per inch drive, which has the same head and track width of the 100 trucks per inch ones. Of course, the magnetic track written by a 48 TPI drive are much larger than the ones written by the 96 or 100 TPI drives, even taking into account the erased guard zones around the tracks. So, if you try formatting a floppy disk already formatted with large tracks, the narrow head is not able to completely erase the old magnetic information and these can cause errors during reads. As a workaround, we get a strong magnet like this. And we swipe it over the disk we want to format. We do that on both sides a few times.
we just violated this warning, but we have removed any previous formatting now. Of course, I suggested to first try a few different disks, untried and magnet erasing method, but that didn't make any difference, so it's really time to grab the oscilloscope and look around for problems. On a situation like this, I usually start checking a few signals on the drive controller I.O. ports, starting with UM3IC. In particular, I'm first asked to check what happens on pin 16, which indicates if the drive controller is looking for a sync sector mark. Then, pin 17 of UM3 should pulse if actual sync marks are detected in the read data stream. And while we are there, we also check what happens on P19, that is the main read-write control. It should alternate between write and read periods during the disk formatting. So this is the signal on pin 16. It seems permanently low, so I asked to record it again as the drive starts formatting. And yes, it starts high then goes low when the drive starts looking for sync marks. Pin 17 seems always high, so no sync marks are detected. Pin 19 also seems always high. However, this last pin must also be recorded right from the start, because it must at least pulse low once as the drive writes track 1, so I ask again for a recording from the beginning of the format. Yes, low then high, it attempts to write track 1. The missing sync signal is not a big surprise. Basically, it means that the drive either has issues writing the track data to disk or reading back the data or even both. The actual sync signal is produced by a gate that gets the bits present in a chained shift register. So, first of all, it's a good idea to check if the shift registers get a valid clock signal that can be probed on any of them at this stage, since, so far, we have no real clues. And we can see a good clock signal. Then, we should check that the data out signal is pulsing as the track 1 gets written. So, that's the next one. And we see a short activity. Another possible issue is the actual write enable signal that goes to the analog board. This, of course, depends from the main read write signal that we already checked, but it is gated with the write protect signals coming from the drive mechanics, so it's always good to check if it's changing state when the track should be written. And yes, it seems working. And now, let's see what we get on the read data line, as so far the write path on the digital PCB is giving no hints about what's not working. Data in is stuck low, it is not normal. We now must move to the analog board, going backwards on the read circuitry to see where the red data signal gets lost. Troubleshooting the analog read circuitry is not, in general, as easy as troubleshooting a digital circuit. Let's, however, have a quick look at the basic building blocks. After the head read-write switches and drive 0 or 1 switches, we have two fully differential stages. The first one is configured as a differentiator amplifier. Then the differential signal is converted into a 0 volt or plus 5 volt square wave by U1, which is an analog comparator IC. Then we can identify two edge detectors made with an RC delay and the exclusive OR gates. Basically, these circuits will produce a positive pulse for every falling or rising edge of their input signals. These two other ICs are monostable gates. Basically, in this case, their purpose is to produce pulses of a specific length when triggered. 
Since we already know that the output of this circuit, which is pin 15 of the P7 connector, is stuck low, I first suggested to check what we can see on pin 5 of the 74LS74 flip-flop in position U6. And this output is stuck high. So we have this LS74 output always high. Then we need to check both the data input on pin 2 and the clock input on pin 3 to decide if we should go again backwards in the read data chain. This is the data input also stuck high. And the clock input is always high too. Now, the data input on the 74LS74 flip-flop comes directly from the comparator output, so it means that the next step is to check both inputs of this LM311. Pin 2 shows some signal, notice how it varies as the drive is seeking. The other input shows a similar signal. At this point I asked the owner to use two probes at the same time, each hooked on one comparator input, and set the oscilloscope to show the difference between the two signals, since, before concluding that the comparator is faulty, we should verify that the differential signal is indeed still differential, and we don't have any strange fault in the previous stages, but he decided to change this LM311 without further testing. And yes, that worked. Now both drives could write and read disks, apparently without other issues. I think an easy repair like this is very uncommon for an old Commodore disk drive. What you are seeing here is a Commodore 8250LP that I received to be repaired not so long ago. And what you see now is the head waveform during the formatting of a disk on drive 0. The drive first writes a track on the lower head. Observe how big appears the right signal on the scope. Then reads back the track and checks for any error. And again it turns to write mode, but now on the upper head and reads it back to check for any error. If all verified OK, it steps in and repeats the process for the next tracks. However, the red signal on the upper head is much lower than the one of the bottom head, and it's not a head pressure issue. The upper coil core must be damaged in some way. Eventually, the red signal on the upper head is too low to be decoded correctly, and the drive aborts the formatting. The only hope to repair such a failure is finding a compatible head for these very rare drives. Also, it's very common to find multiple failures during troubleshooting. Anyway, one more Commodore drive was fixed. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's all for today. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.